really? Whoa. So normally, everything's about old bikes, starting up old bikes, recommissioning old bikes, and just rescuing old stuff. But this is one of my hobbies from, from years ago. I've not actually done a track day in eight years. And uh, this, I've had it for about two years now, still not done a track day on it. So I need to check it down because a few months ago, while in Scotland, I threw it down road and went tarmac swimming. A few video of me sliding on my arse at 70 mile an hour. 60 mile an hour. Oh no! And yeah, I hurt the bike. A couple of little bits I've repaired and uh, a couple of bits I haven't. So for anybody who didn't know, there's a little video series about me rebuilding this. Bought it as a non-runner. We got it going, me and my son. Got it all painted up. And this is the damage that I did when I crashed in Scotland. So I grated out the casing. So we got a new casing for it. I've grated out the fairing. So we're gonna have to do something with that because it looks a right mess. But luckily nothing's actually cracked. It's just kind of ground down. It's just gonna take a little bit of fiberglass filler. I'm not sure where that's come from. I think that's just chain lube. But uh, it must be the old chain lube because I only ever use Worth Dry Lube. And if you don't use Worth Dry Lube, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, a couple of little bits need tidying up. Wants a new lever, smash that off. Could do with a new bar end, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on that because I don't really need it. And that took a bit of a tatering. I left half of that in Scotland, I think. This is it from that angle. Oh yeah. So half of that's in Scotland, but the rest of it is fairly straight. It all works perfectly. And it's road legal. But before I do any work on it, I just need to do a bit of a shakedown and make sure everything, other than cosmetics, everything's tickety-boo. Motorbike, blue sky. So with a full tank of premium and a beautiful blue sky, we set off to give a good shakedown. Hey, so it's a little test ride just to see if all my gear works and if I can live with race shift and I don't keep reverting my brain back to road shift, which is down for up as opposed to up for down, which is race shift, obviously. So, and I want to test my gear out, I want to test my mic out, all this rubbish. And I'm gonna try and vlog my track day for you. And it's a little test flight on the bike just to get used to it, just to get a, get a little feel for it. Feel what it's like going through bottom gears for that full chat, which is what I'll be doing on track day. So just getting a little feel for it and trying to stop my eyes from watering. Cause it's been a long time since I've ridden a bike quickly on track. Obviously I'm not gonna be going very quick today, obviously. <laughs> That would be illegal. Six day tops. Also, I've had to go out and buy new leathers because um, over the last seven years, since I last rode a track day, mine have shrank just a little bit. I don't know, I must have kept them somewhere damp or... You know how it is. They've dried out. And also, I can hear a little misfire on the bike as well. And I'm not sure whether that's just because it's been standing or whether I need to show it some plugs. But it's really down low. Other thing is it's got a power commander on this bike, which might not have been set properly. It seems to run all right when it's on song, when she's a yelping, but not all the times. Like if you're going slowly through traffic, I know it doesn't really matter when you're on track, but. thing I need to do as well is get used to gears matching just because this bike doesn't have a slipper clutch my old bike did modern bikes do and the reason why I need a slipper clutch is because I've a got race shift on and if you change down a gear while you should be changing up a gear it can end disastrously 
So yeah, just to get used to that a little bit. And obviously with the slipper clutch, uh, you've got your engine braking, but it's a bit more severe. You can get the back end jumping around, you can get it trying to misbehave and doing all kinds of things. So I just wanted to get used to that. This rear shift has got so many benefits. But a bit of a hang up and it's a nasty one. Because what happens is you'll be um, in the middle of the corner, you'll get full engine braking all of a sudden if you go down a gear when you should be going up a gear and then your rear end will instantly step out because of the engine braking and you'll go up and over sky ground sky ground sky ground nurse and hospital that's the next thing it all goes black we're coming to hospital so that's all I'm doing is just acclimatizing myself to the rear shift getting used to a few things letting it roll around between my legs so you can get relaxed around it and don't worry I could see what were coming because I know this road very well you can always see on this road because you can look across the grass and see if there's any cars going in the opposite direction there are now there's one there's another one there's another one Let's just have a tiny bit of fun. Start 50 there. Oh dear, I'm glad I found that now. Got a juddering on the brakes. That was the first real hard braking I've had. That's not going to be nice when you're on track, giving it the full beans, braking as hard as you can. It's going to be quite uncomfortable. So I'm glad I found that now. Mm, either that is brake juddering like that, it's either warp brake or loose headstock bearings. People overlook that a lot. Actually, it might not be that bad. A loose head stop bearing sounds terrifying, but it's it only needs a slight bit of adjustment and it will be uh, fixed again. But it's not nice when you hit the brakes and you find it all juddering up front end like that. Does it inspire confidence? Let's have a little break in section here. Yeah, I think it's headstock bearings because when you're braking very hard, it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite sure now that that problem is the headstock a little bit of play in the headstock I'm sure you will be able to see that on camera as well so yeah it's the first shakedown really 
First of all, I haven't been able to go out when it's dry and just stretch its legs a bit. Because you can't play around too much when it's raining. Not that I play around on roads at all. At all, never. It's fucking raining again. I don't fucking believe it. Why? I'm going home. Reason why I don't like riding it wet. It's not because I'm a pussy. Oh, I might be a little bit of a pussy, but I've got track based tyres on, which are not very good when they're cold. Never mind when they're cold and wet. So, yeah, it's it, they turn into pretty much like riding on concrete against concrete. So it's really slippy in the wet so you can't you just you can't do anything you can't you can't throw it into a corner harder than you normally would you have to be really smooth so I'm just gonna call it and go back get back to some dry road because every time I come out on the Pennines it starts chucking it down and what makes it worse when it rains is if it's been dry for a little spell which it has it's been nice and warm and dry for a few days all the oil and tire debris and things that have dropped onto the road and disappeared into the cracks in the road, it rains and it all floats to the surface. So that makes it 10 times slippier. So it's great when you're going out on track focused tyres. Lovely. Exactly what you want. A little bit of lubrication on them. Again, this is the sixth time I've been out riding and had to come back because it rained. Or been cut short because it rained. I mean, the third and fourth time I just stayed out. But I'm bored with it now. I just want to play. Anyway, we've got a track day coming up. I'm not going to say where it is because I don't want people to turn up to it. Put pressure on me. Well, the idea is, I've not ridden in eight years now. When I originally made the video and I bought this bike, I wanted to uh, overtake 10 litre superbikes on the track day, in the day. Just a bit of a challenge just for me, just to make a video interesting. And vlog it and, uh, and show everybody how crap I am. And more than likely crash. Because I'm a bit of a crasher. My track day mates always call me the gardener, that was my nickname. Because I spent a hell of a lot of time on grass. As much as a gardener. But that's okay. If you're not crashing, you aren't trying. And I try and be fast. I'm not fast, but I try and be fast. People tell me I am fast, but not fast people. Pretty sure now that is. She's doing it at all speeds and it varies in the vibration. And sometimes it'll vibrate quickly, sometimes it will vibrate slowly, but it's not speed matched. So I don't think it's warp disc, I think it's the uh, head, head stock that's loose. Just a little bit of play in it, that's all it takes. And all it does is it just overrides the, um, the trail angle and the weight of the bike and just pushes against that bearing. So it's pushing the front wheel back, really. And then it just starts to rattle and vibrate and move forward and backward. So it's actually the front wheel moving forward and backward that's causing the vibration. It's not the brakes, which sounds silly, but it's actually better than having warped front discs. Everybody overlooks it. Everybody always assumes they've got warped discs. So as soon as it's raining towards Glossop, as usual, let's have a little run through Bamford. So what I need is, I just need some nice mid-speed uh, mid speed corners with no long straights where I could get myself in trouble. I just need to be able to carve a few corners and just get used to the feel of bike, get used to how quick it tips in, because it's been a long time and they say you go rusty with any time away, good grief, hello, and you definitely do. Uh, when I parked my bike up, I was really confident at that time and I could just jump on it and uh, uh, do silly things like knee down and it was just a, a normal thing. I can't even get close at the moment. I don't even feel like I've got confidence to get close. 
and it's at those times when you overcook it you think oh i used to be able to do this you throw it into a corner you tense up and that's when you have a crash either that you either tense up or you tense up and then you see a point something catches your eye and you think oh i could crash into that the next thing you've crashed into it it's called target fixation that's nasty and that comes just through lack of confidence so if you throw it into a corner you have to be sure in your mind you can get through it and get out of the side without dropping by as soon as you tense up as soon as that doubt crosses your mind and you tense up the bike goes down they say it's about becoming one with your machine and it's 100 percent true you have to be man machine especially when you get on track it's not so bad on track if you do go down because there's nothing oh i've just done it for first time first time i went up instead of down on race shift so i've not lost that altogether don't do it thank you yeah it's all right too people say that it's not it's not safe on track when you go on track you're more likely to crash no you're more likely to crash when you're doing things like this you've got the unexpected you've got people pulling out on you you've got dogs running sheep running out into the road and cyclists it's the unexpected that gets you but on the road when you go down there's always something a tree or a pillar box or a phone box that just doesn't want to move it's not the speed that gets you it's that short sharp stop and you don't get that on track well you do but you've got to slide a long way and do a lot of decelerating so and it might not sound like a lot but if you slip if you slip off and you slide sliding towards a um, lamppost even 10 mile per hour you 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 try running full pelt into a lamppost see how that goes for you it's not going to be fun and it's raining again as madness said it's raining again What a beautiful countryside. If you live close to Derbyshire, you're so lucky. Derbyshire's a beautiful place. Ah, oh, she flip flops, lovely. Now, this is a lovely road. We go down into Carver and Froggart. And the road's wet, which is fun. When I say fun, I mean shit. Just as I get my tyres warm, dried out, <sighs> water happens. I can see the rain falling on my face. I can see there is no better place. They're standing up and they're falling down. Did I can almost drown. Don't know of it. I don't even know why I bothered. Too many dash cams these days. Don't do white lines, don't do chevrons, because people are bitches, and they will report you with I thought that we're breaking the law. That's not. It's playtime! Be sensible, Basbo. So sensible now. Let's not try to get killed on the first day.
awful surface. Jesus Christ, man. And this looks wet, so I'm not even going to try it. But we used to get knee down here. Yeah? Once upon a time. And here. When it wasn't wet. I've all of a sudden just become very conscious of my age and my fitness. My legs are aching. My forearms are aching from pulling clutching. Anyway. So, shakedown complete then. Hello, Ferrari. It is a rah rah. It's a very nice colour. If it's a hybrid one, you might have to struggle with it. If it's not, he's mince meat. I'll kill him. Ah, I feel like Scrappy Doo. I'll split him. Let me get him. Let me get him. Willie Walker. It's causing me concern. Goodbye, Mr. Ferrari. Wow, fun. I think I'm done. So let's get it up on the bench then. We'll check the front brakes anyway. And I'll do the head stop. Just make sure, check them for tension. This particular road is very beautiful. I know, I'm just saying hello to your dog. <laughs> right, so, we got some bits. So I've got a new stator cover, and two new levers, and that's all it's gonna have for now. I'm gonna decide what to do with fairings after. Uh, I've not decided whether I want to spend money on it or not, because as everybody knows, if you watch the show, I'm really tight and I don't like spending money. But I want it to look good on track. I don't want it to look like an absolute bag of nails. And if I get to holding area and they see that lever, they want them to go out on track. The bike's got to be up to a certain standard, otherwise they'll not let you on. So let's fit the clutch lever first. All we need, screwdriver, 10 mil. The reason I'm working outside is because there's no room on bench in workshop because I don't have a tire for Katana. I'm sure most of you are here because you've seen the series of the Katana. Right. Just to just clutch back up. You should have a little bit of play in your clutch lever. If you don't have any play, let's just say if you wind it right way up to there, you have no play in it, you will get a slipping clutch eventually. It will start slipping. 
So just give it that amount, that's perfect. And then nip that back up. You can use your span adjuster to have it further out, just for your preference, for your tastes. But I love these levers, they're only the 27 quid I think they were. I'll leave a link, link to these in the description. But I wanna leave the other side, I think. Actually, can you see as well? They're etched inside. Yeah, they're etched with CBR 600RR, which is nice. And for the casing, I'm gonna leave that for the time being because I'll have to drop oil and I wanna go for another test ride to make sure. When I went out on it, obviously you saw the uh, headstock bearings, which I've not actually investigated yet, but I will be doing that shortly. Uh, I'm, I'm very sure it is the headstock bearings because if it was, if it was warp discs, um, it would be pulsating through the lever all the time and it's not so that's just pointing to headstock bearings i really enjoyed making that video and uh, so if you enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh, if you want to donate to our channel i'll leave you a link in the description to buy us a coffee appreciate everybody else who's bought us a coffee so far we've had we're into the hundreds of pounds now from donations from people so i appreciate every single last one of you and if you want to see a 48 year old man crash go tarmac swimming Make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a good one coming up. A really fun video coming up.